Um, hello, everybody. Uh, nice, uh, nice to see you here. I am Francesco. I'm a senior machine learning engineer at uh, Bolt, um, a ride hailing company, uh, working mainly in more working mainly in computer vision, and I am um, an AWS machine learning hero. Today, I'm gonna uh, talk to you about how to uh, train. Uh, um, uh, segmentation model uh, on uh, human faces uh, and how to deploy it um, on Amazon SageMaker, NVIDIA, NVIDIA Triton. Um, so what you're looking at right now uh, is the uh, blog post, which is basically going to you know, be the, the skeleton of our of our session today. Uh, so this is uh, this covers a lot more in detail uh, the, the the content that we'll will present. So feel free to head here uh, and you know check it out and you know make sure like to check all the details if I have uh, if I not answered all your all your questions. Um, okay, so like the the um, the uh, blog is also going to give us the the you know like the the, the agenda or the skeleton for today uh, for today's talk. Uh, we're going to start from. What it is that we are building and, and why, uh, and then we're going to move into the core of the session, which means you know finding the data set, uh, and then you know like training our, our our model, and then SageMaker, NVIDIA, NVIDIA Triton, and we're going to end up with some nice uh, speed up benchmarks and figure out how much faster NVIDIA Triton, I mean NVIDIA Triton on, on, on SageMaker is compared to our to our to our baseline. Alrighty, so what is it that we are doing? Um, so to show you that, um, I'm heading to uh, this uh, hacking face space, which I created. And the idea is that uh, we're going to feed the model um, a fa um, an image uh, with uh, you know human uh, human faces, right? So crowd in this this case like these three ladies and the, the model is gonna figure out where the faces are it's gonna segment them uh, and then it's gonna uh, blur them out uh, and the results is um, like in a second it's gonna show up um, I mean the result is gonna be this um, so that's that's what we're gonna uh, that's what we want to achieve um, why are we doing this uh, well because it's fun as a starter um, and then uh, well because it's a clear Ethical application to a, a, a ethical uh, application of, of of AI, so you know, like ethics should always be a top concern for AI developers. Unfortunately, it's not always the case yet. Uh, I feel that we have done like a tremendous amount of work in the last years, but there's still a lot of work to be done. So I, you know, I thought that I should lead by example, uh, and I, I I decided like to pick up a side project which had both AI and ethics at its at its core. Um, and I told myself, you know, what is like most impactful then protecting people's privacy by developing a model which is able to automatically blur uh, human faces in a, in a crowd. So that's how it started. And uh, let's see where it went. Um, so to show you that, uh, I'm going to uh, switch to this tab in which there is like this Jupyter notebook with, with all the code coming with uh, the, um, uh, the, the blog post. Um, so all right. So what do we want to do here? Like first, we want to um, want to train a model, right? And in order to train a model, we need data. So the data is the face synthetics data set from Microsoft, which is a um, pretty incredible data set of 100k images, 412 times 412 pixels, with you know humans, uh, you know all sorts of races, gender, uh, lighting, clothing, uh, uh, facial expressions. It's it's absolutely awesome, and it comes with um, um, segmentation masks, of course, of what as you can see, well, clothing again, background, um, uh, and you know, nose, ears, um, eyes. I, I don't need all of that actually. Uh, so the, the the first thing I I did was to um, remap all those uh, all those uh, classes into like binary uh, a binary uh, problem. So basically, what I have is actually you know background and, and and face, right? So I don't I don't care about anything else. So what you see here is the result of the remapping. Uh, so the images are um, well, actually, it, each pixel is going to be um, uh, classified as either as either face or or, or background. So this is this is the result, uh, and uh, we are also not using the entire data set. We are using like a, a 1,000 sample um, from the data set. Again, 412 times 412. Uh, the rest is uh, pretty standard in terms of uh, a PyTorch training, so defining transforms, data set, data loaders, and then we moving into the modeling side, uh, which is uh, done with a UNet um, with a ResNet 34 backbone. This is a quite old. Um, architecture in terms of segmentation, but it is incredibly performant. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna stick to it, uh, and then that's the training. So we're gonna use fast AI, 
Uh, and uh, well, as you can see in 30 epochs, uh, 30 epochs, so that's you know one minute and, and, and a half per epoch, uh, we are we are done, and those are those are the results. And the results are you know pretty pretty amazing to be to be honest, actually. Uh, so I was not expecting to see to see that. Uh, as you can see, like on the on the left, there's a ground truth, on the right, there's a prediction, and it's not it's not, it's not perfect, right? You know, like for example, in this case, you can see that our model is not able to capture the level of detail at the hair of the hair, but um, I guess that's fine because at the end of the day, uh, we are going to end up with uh, this, you know, so we're going to have to um, blur the face. So we don't really care about having this kind of this kind of detail. Uh, the results are, are pretty good. Uh, so we have a model, it is trained. So what do we do next? Uh, so the first thing we do is to convert it to torch script. And uh, the idea here is that we need a, we need a baseline. Uh, we're going to uh, trace and save the, the, the model. Like, tracing means literally, you know, taking like a dummy input uh, of 512 times 512 pixels, and then you know sending it through um, the, the the model. Uh, and what PyTorch does is that you're gonna kind of figures out like you know layer by layer the, the 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 shapes of this of this input across across the model, and then creates a graph and then saves it right. Uh, and you know like this this new uh, this new um, framework which is Torch Script was gonna allow us to uh, load the model up and, and run inference without uh, pretty much any other Python dependency, which is which is pretty great. Right, right. So we do we do that, um, and then you know we check if the results are uh, are the same um, compared to what we were, were obtaining before, which is the case. We are good. We got our, our baseline. Um, all right. So let's move now to uh, the actual serious stuff. Right. So uh, we got to move into the direction of of uh, Triton and then SageMaker. What do we what do we need first? And the first step is Onyx, right? Um, so we have our PyTorch model, which we have trained. Uh, the very first step is convert to Onyx. So Onyx is um, uh, is is a, a, a framework um, which allows to run uh, inference on machine learning models coming from all sorts of uh, training frameworks, actually. Actually, it is framework agnostic, as a matter of fact, right? So you can convert a model to, to Onyx from TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, Scikit-Learn, XGBoost, LightGBM, you name it. Uh, uh, the idea is that you can convert everything into this, 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 this standard and common framework, and then you're, you, you will just need the Onyx runtime. At, at inference time, to run your your inference, your 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 predictions, which is uh, which is pretty pretty great uh, because it simplifies your you know uh, inference environment, and then most importantly, it's faster. In my experiments, it's between thirty and fifty percent faster compared to uh, at least like PyTorch in in this case. So it's, it's pretty great. And the idea is very similar to what we did for, with Torch Script. So we define an, an input image, five hundred and twelve times five hundred and twelve, and then we execute. I mean, we run Torch Torch .onyx .export, which runs the magic, right? Uh, so here here, we are basically once again like you know the, what what Onyx does that kind of figures out like this this graph um, image gets uh, getting in outputs getting out what happens in the middle uh, and then you know it also runs some opt uh, optimizations. And then we get this Onyx um, Onyx model, uh, which we can run inference on. Uh, with, uh, as you can see, you know, you know, there is in, an inference session which we define, uh, and and then we run uh, we run inference uh, with the um, Onyx runtime, um, and we check if the results are the same, and they indeed are, so we're good. That's uh, that's great, right? So Onyx was the first step because the second step is uh, NVIDIA TensorRT. Uh, so what is what is that? So TensorRT is um, uh, compiler uh, and a runtime engine uh, developed by by Nvidia, um, and uh, you know it's a very nice piece of software which allows to. I mean, it comes it ships with all sorts of of, of uh, optimization hacks, right? So in terms of like modeling and, and, and inference, right? So for instance, it comes with um, uh, layer fusion and then quantization. As a matter of fact, in this case, I am quantizing my model from FP32 to uh, integer, so to int eight, which is incredibly aggressive uh, and in general generally comes with uh, some sort of like accuracy decrease. In my case, uh, actually, it, it doesn't. So I'm, I'm getting like the, the, the literally, you know, the best of both worlds, right? I'm, I'm, I'm getting like a faster model, a smaller model uh, with the same level of, of accuracy. And the magic is, is happening with this tensor, uh, tensor RT exec command. Uh, to which you have to, you know, feed your um, Onyx model, and then you're, you know, have to provide the out input shapes, output shapes, uh, and uh, well, uh, you know, uh, the uh, TensorRT exec is gonna is gonna take like the Onyx model, run it, uh, actually, you know, um, uh, uh, load it up, and then convert it into um, NVIDIA TensorRT.
which is at the end of the day an artifact called a model dot plan. Uh, it's that is that is a model which we're going to store somewhere safe because now we are going to move to the actual fun, which is uh, Amazon SageMaker. Uh, all right, because we are ready now, like to move to the cloud, right? So actually run some inference uh, out there. Uh, and the very first step is uh, well uh, deploying our uh, baseline, right? So we had our uh, Torch script model, if you remember, which we do, which we converted at the at the very beginning. Uh, so we gotta, we wanna um, deploy it to uh, uh, to SageMaker to have to have a baseline, um, and uh, it runs. Uh, actually, you know, we can run inference on it. Uh, it works. That's great. We keep it there um, for our uh, tests at the very end. Uh, because now uh, we move to the very final part, which is. Um, deploying to uh, nvidia triton uh okay what is what is that again um so uh, uh, nvidia triton so uh, uh, triton is is um is an inference server developed by by nvidia uh, and an inference server is the, just a fancy word for uh, a software interface between um requests coming to the to the, to the endpoint and the hardware on which those uh, requests are going to be executed um so in this case, Trident is, is this piece of software which is tightly coupled with uh, TensorRT uh, and actually NVIDIA hardware, so NVIDIA GPUs. Um, it comes with lots of like smart ways of, of handling uh, those incoming requests. So for example, like concurrency and 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 uh, dynamic batching. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's you know really uh, really cool from this perspective. Uh, and well, you know, before the the interaction with AWS, basically, if you want to run your models on Triton, you have to you know set everything up yourself and you know install Triton on your on your on your machine uh, and figuring out the environment and blah blah blah. So it was a little bit of a pain, as you can as you can imagine. Um, and uh, well, the the co the cooperation between uh, AWS teams and Nvidia um, uh, turned that that pain into some sort of like piece of cake because now uh, you can uh, you can deploy your model. Uh, on Nvidia Triton, uh, on Amazon SageMaker, pretty much in a one-liner. Uh, so how is, how, is this, how is this working? So the idea is, well, first, once again, uh, we got to package up like our um, uh, mother artifacts uh, into, uh, the mother dot, into a model.tar.gz and upload it to, to S3. Uh, and then we move to uh, the uh, you know, actual uh, SageMaker SDK. Uh, once again, this is like the, literally the, the, the way you tell uh, SageMaker that we want to uh, deploy the model on, on Triton, uh, one, one liner, an environment variable, as a matter of fact. Uh, and uh, so we create like the, we create a model. Uh, there you go. We create the uh, endpoint config, uh, and then we uh, deploy. We create the endpoint, right? Uh, once again on a, on a GPU machine. Uh, so same same GPU machine as before, G4DN for the other for the other baseline model, uh, and then we can run inference, right? So inference is executed by uh, pinging the endpoint with a binarized version of the of our image because that's what Triton accepts, uh, and um, that's what we get out of it, right? Um, it's pretty great. So it's working, uh, it's working fine uh, as expected. Uh, uh, how fast is that, right? Uh, because that's, that's, I guess, the main question we want, we want, we want to answer here. And uh, to show you that, I guess the best way is to uh, look at some numbers uh, from CloudWatch. So Torch script runs in 130 milliseconds on average, uh, which is already very fast. Uh, to be honest, it's quite quite, it's quite fast. Uh, but then Triton, um, look at this. So it actually runs in, on average, in 15.6 milliseconds, which is an 8x speed up, uh, uh, which is literally mind blowing. It is it, it, at least like it blew my mind. Um, uh, all right. So what 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 did did we do here? Uh, once again, so we started like from. Uh, a data set, so we trained, uh, we trained a segmentation model to identify and blur faces uh, in, a, in, a, in a photo of a, of a, of a, um, of a crowd. Uh, and then we uh, deployed it to um, uh, SageMaker, like both um, a baseline model on a Torch script version of, of the original model, and then um, the, um, the same model converted to Onyx and TensorRT uh, on, NVIDIA, on NVIDIA Triton. And what we got um, as, a, as a result is a model which is 8x faster than our baseline. It runs in uh, like pretty much 16 milliseconds on average, which is amazing. Uh, there it is. I hope you, uh, you liked it. Uh, and uh, once again, happy to, be, uh, to have been here. Um, and see you next time.